So hi, I'm Catherine Walsh, and I'm here with the Sport and Peace Media Center at SCAR. Uh, today we're going to be talking to Somaz Abu Ali, um, a PhD student at SCAR, and she's going to be talking to us a little about her research and thoughts regarding martial arts. So hi, Somaz, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, so let's just start off, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and where you're from? Sure. Um, so I'm uh, originally Iranian, and um, I grew up, I left Iran when I was three years old, and uh, post-Islamic revolution, and uh, from there, at, at the time, my family consisted of my mom, my dad, and myself, and uh, we moved to a couple different countries, included, including Bangladesh, Pakistan, and finally, um, we ended up in Canada, which is where I spent most of my childhood. Um, and for the past probably 15 years or so, I've been in the Virginia area in the U.S. So, okay, great. Uh, so, so, how did you get involved in martial arts, and what practice do you do? So, I train in a traditional style of martial arts called Shotokan Karate, and Shotokan Karate is rooted in a concept called Budo, and Budo is a holistic type of development where. Um, in, in, in that it uses the mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it says that in order to improve in that way as a person, karate and your training is a way of life. So your development never stops, your training never stops, mm -hmm. and your training is really a framework in which you can constantly practice on improving these three items. Um, so. So that's the philosophy behind the traditional martial arts. Um, Technique-wise, Shotokan Karate has about 50% hands, 50% legs. Um, all martial, martial arts is really, at, at the essence, um, about prevention. We never start our training with an offensive, offensive technique. It's always a defensive technique, which implies that martial arts is actually about prevention, not about creating conflict. It's about using every means you can to prevent conflict from happening and being aware that stepping here might be a dangerous situation so that you can avoid it. So it gives you that awareness. Um, but it's also about if you had no choice and you had to defend yourself, Martial arts is about empowering and equipping a smaller person to defend against a bigger person. Um, so in Shotokan Karate, we use, like I was saying, 50% hands, 50% legs. Um, and what, what I think is special about it is that it utilizes, um, technique-wise, is it utilizes the floor. You utilizes your alignment in your body to create the maximum best technique that you can execute. But it, also transfers the energy at the end of your technique. Hmm. Um, it's really not about size or power or, or brute force, because if that was it, then a smaller person could never be able to engage against a bigger person. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it's, again, it goes back to that holistic, holistic type of mind-body-spirit development um, to, um, to overcome any type of conflict that you're, you're confronted with. Nice. Well, you sound very knowledgeable and passionate about this. So how yes. long have you been practicing martial arts, and can you tell us about some of your achievements? Sure. So I've been practicing for about 15 years now, okay. um, and I'm a USA team member. Um, I've been a USA team member for probably about the past uh, 11, 12 years, and um, I compete. Uh, I'm a seven-time um, US national champion, and I also compete internationally. And um, I've placed anywhere from first to third internationally, and I'm also the um, first American athlete to place uh, second at an Invitational World Cup Championship. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so I know you're a PhD student here at SCAR, so yes. just to bring us back to that, how did you come to SCAR? What brought you here? Well, uh, SCAR is a special place. Um, I, I think so too. <laughs> so um, it's. Oh, oh, what attracted me to the program was really its its emphasis on the theoretical development behind behind practice. I feel like, for example, my practice has been in karate has been a way to empower me. But without the theoretical knowledge, 
or let's take a better example, for me to do a technique, I can practice it and practice it. Okay, I may get better, I may get better at doing it well, and I may get better at doing it bad through all the practice. But if I don't understand the theory behind how to do that technique, how to engage the floor, what's involved in that, what are the dynamics, if I don't understand it, then m my execution and practice probably will not be, well, specifically in a martial arts frame, I know will, will not be as effective, will not be my best technique that I can do. And so I feel like you know this, this example transfers into real world applications too. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that, that this program gives me that theoretical background that I can mix with my practice to make it, to make what I do in this world most effective as possible. Okay, that sounds really interesting. So what do you hope to accomplish with your research? So specifically what I'm looking at is, is martial arts as an empowerment tool. I feel that my practice has empowered me as a woman and it's empowered me as a person to, to really believe that whatever I want to do, that not only do I have a choice to go after it, but I know what it takes to make it succeed. I know that it takes discipline. I know that it takes sacrifice. I know that it takes a vision, and I know that it mm. takes passion. And so I feel empowered within my mar through my martial arts framework. And what I would like to do is, is transfer that knowledge and really, I guess, pay it forward in a way um, to others, female or male, um, but to the larger global context. Um, to say that this is one way, one framework that we can use to gain empowerment, to gain a sense of empowerment. And what I'd love to do is through that sense of empowerment, because one could argue, well, okay, you're empowered, so what? Mm -hmm. um, is to take that empowerment and use that, particularly for women, to feel that they can serve in leadership roles in their society, despite the obstacles that might be in the way. Wow, that's an incredible goal. So how do you envision? <laughs> it is a big goal, but that's great. How yes. do you envision doing that? empowering women through martial arts. So, or men also, you said. Sure. Yeah. Um, one of the ways that I would hope to do this is, is through a diplomatic effort um, and a diplomatic framework. So, for example, what would that include? Mm -hmm. uh, there are programs like this where, uh, particularly I think the State Department is really honing in on this, um, is bringing two groups of people, two nations, two cultures, two groups of people together so that they can gain an understanding of each other's cultures, of each other's viewpoints, of each other's perspectives through engaging in a sport activity. Okay. Um, and so what I would, and, and. So diplomacy through sports. Yes, okay. sports diplomacy. Got it. And so um, through this, the goal is that two goals will come together, interact in a healthy, productive, engaging environment in the sports structure, go back to their to their nations or to, to their environments or societies, and they would use that new perspective to to further engage in sports, maybe further create sport diplomacy initiatives in that way, maybe change attitudes, change perspectives. Um, create, you know, create new entities, organizations mm -hmm. in their environment, um, and so I think martial arts would is one way because this is the way that I know and this is the way that it's empowered me. Mm -hmm. I feel that this is one way that I can tap into the global context, um, bringing two groups of people together. But one thing that I might add is 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 incredibly crucial, especially as I'm doing more research on the topic of, of sport diplomacy, okay. is the intention okay. that we have in doing this. It's very easy for one group to feel that the other group is imposing values on them or telling them that they should be a certain way or not be a certain way. And, and this, is not, this is not productive, and again, it's not healthy. No one walks away from that feeling good um, right. about each other or really, um, it, it would reinforce stereotypes, if anything. 
Um, so is there a way to ensure that that doesn't happen? So this is one thing I'm looking at and okay. I'm trying to research more and more is um, through my doctoral program is how can we create, if, if two nations, if two states want to get involved, mm -hmm. how can we ensure that their intention is is really genuine in that in that we can we can focus on just a cultural um, s cultural interaction. Some so how can we separate basically state interests mm -hmm. from the benefits that sport can bring, which are teamwork, discipline, physical health. Um, you know, for example, lots of work, lots of, there's lots of programs with Israelis and Palestinians where they've never really met each other their whole life, but then they come through together in an in activity, in a sport activity, that's structured, um, and, and they're focusing on drills that they've done to, to, to make them realize that, wow, this other person, even though they may be Palestinian or Israeli, enjoys the same kinds of things that I can do. And so this is a commonality. This has nothing to do with you know state interests. So how can we how can we how can we tap into creating an environment where it's just about this, and then give those groups tools that they can go back and create similar environments within their larger society. Um, this is one way that I'm not saying this is a way that we can resolve conflicts, but right. it's, it's one way that. I feel that I can add to the field of to creating to creating this peaceful world. Um, really, I mean, I know that sounds all cliche, peaceful yeah. world, um, but but it's 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 one way that we can do it. Um, okay. Are so there? Do you have any theories or leads on how the sports can be productive rather than bringing up issues like you talked about? Uh, so. Like, how do you do that? How do you make it productive and empowering and not forcing it onto another? So, you know, where I'm at right now mm -hmm. is, 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 the, is the notion of intention. Right. So, that's how, what it all comes down that's to. That's what, I, I feel that at this point, that's what it comes down to. Okay. How can you, how, how can, for example, states separate their, in, their interest and their intention, uh, separate their interests? Mm -hmm. So that we can have an environment that's purely about sport participation, that's purely about teamwork. Um, for example, there was a program that I was involved with, um, with the State Department that included a group of uh, martial arts women from Tajikistan. Uh, oh. Different martial arts. Um, I mean, it was, there was um, Shotokan, one or two people mm -hmm. had done Shotokan. There was Taekwondo, which is the Korean-based martial arts. Okay. There was um, there was boxing, uh, wrestling. Mm -hmm. So we came together and we spent two two uh, couple hours, two afternoons together. And what we it, it was really the State Department had brought them over here for a period of about a week um, to get them to familiarize them with the American culture. This is uh -huh. our culture. We are, we're introducing you to different organizations, different martial arts, you know, coaches and athletes to let you see how, how do they practice, how do they, you know, work in the sports field. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and likewise, we can get to know them, we can learn from them and their experiences, um, and also, you know, learn from how they view um, what they're right. seeing here, um, which is also very important. And so what I did was, was um, I had two sessions with them. One was where we're actually training together. And you know, people think karate and they think punching and kicking each other. It, it's, it's not about that. You know, it, it is a, it is a self-defense. You are learning to defend yourself. So obviously you will have to practice right. blocks, kicking, punching, and so forth. Um, so we do do that. It is a component. But what we did was I did a drill with them many drills. One of them was where they teamed up together. We, we, we outlined a couple of the techniques that we would do and one person was blindfolded and the other one, the other person was with them and they were in charge. They would start on one end of the room and for example stepping in punching to the other end of the room and what they would do then is one person is blindfolded, the other person would have to rely on the other one's direction. They didn't know how far they were going because we would adjust the distance. 
and they would just have to keep going and punching one by one, mm. but listen to the other person so that they don't end up hitting the wall on the other end of the room. Right. Um, it it takes a lot to trust the other person and to and, and so through physical activity, you're being engaged in is in in, in a. You're, you're, you're engaging with the other person through physical activity and exercising your ability to trust. And, ex and the other person might feel a sense of responsibility towards you that if you don't, mm -hmm. if they don't watch out, you're gonna get hurt. So there's a mutual responsibility developed between them. So this is one thing that we did. So if we can create environments like this, really structure and focus our programs, sport diplomacy programs to do this, then I feel like we can begin to not only enjoy the, the experience, but perhaps use this to change attitudes and bring, bring discussions to the table that possibly are relevant to an overall issue in a, in a country. Um, US-China ping pong diplomacy, yeah. I mean, this is huge. You've, you've heard, we've heard about this all the time. Um, right. It didn't resolve the conflict, but it happened because a US U.S. team member by accident missed his bus and went on the Chinese uh, team's table uh, table tennis slash ping pong mm -hmm. um, bus to go on the tour that they had. So um, that's when t one member of the Chinese team and this member of the U.S. team start struck up a conversation, exchanged gifts later on, and that both presidents, U.S. president, Chinese president, heard about this. And that led to an invitation for them, for the U.S. to come to China and to to get to know each other. So you know, it was it was an opening. It served as a stimulus um, to start conversations on bigger issues. So um, so you know, long long story short, um, I I hope to I think sport diplomacy is um, is a is a is a fruitful. Um, avenue toward tapping into the global context and creating really our own peace and, and, a, and a, an environment where we can start to talk about bigger issues. Great. Um, together for a second. Okay. And then. So um, that all sounds really interesting. Thank you so much for joining us today, Somaz. Uh, it's really you. interesting hearing your perspective on how we can bring sports to bring people together throughout different cultures and different conflicts. And I look forward to hearing about your research developments on this. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us today on Sports and Peace Media Center. And we hope you join us next time.